What is up guys, and today I'm actually presenting an easy step-by-step -step guide on how to complete raids, Chambers of Zarek. I put a lot of time and effort into this and I hope you guys enjoy. So the first thing we're going to start with is the stat requirements for raids. So I'd highly recommend being 99 in all combat skills, so that's all melee stats, hit points, ranging, magic, and you don't need 99 prayer, but the higher the better. So 77 prayer for rigor is highly recommended, and if you have the new prayers, anguish and torment as well, then that's really useful. But if you don't have either of those, then I'd stick to the normal spell book, because rigor and augury are really useful. Alright, for solo raids, which I'm mainly going to be covering, you also need 90 in the following skills. So you're going to need 90 agility, herb lore, thieving, and farming. And it does help to have a higher mining level as well, though you don't technically need any mining level requirement. But for Guardian's room, the higher your mining level is, the more you're going to be hitting on the Guardians. Alright, so that covers all the stat requirements, so now let's move on to the gear requirements. Alright, so this is like the pleb setup. So all this gear, believe it or not, costs less than 500 mil. Like the trident is around 200 mil, the occults are like 100 mil, arcane's like 100 mil, stairs around 100 mil. This is probably like the cheapest possible gear setup that you get away with. I guess instead of a trident, you could use an Ivan staff, although it's a lot worse. This is all the gear requirement for raids. So you will need a tribage setup, you will need a super combat flask, ranging flask, stamina flask, and an anti-venom since you won't be using a serpentine helm. And you want a melee switch and a range switch as well. Now I'm going to be explaining these items later on. Bear that if you don't have a dragon warhammer, which is a better version, then you will need a hammer to build the chest and for the crab's room. Alright, so this is like mid-tier gear, so there's more switches and as you can see we are not using void this time. So main fact is we now have serpentine helm, which means we no longer need to bring an anti-venom. We also have a dragon warhammer, which means that we no longer need to bring a hammer. We also have a zamrock in Hasta, which is useful for certain bosses. Blowpipe is also a lot better. And yeah, we've got bandus now, we've got some zenite jewelry, so this gear set will probably cost around on three to four bills so yeah this is slightly more expensive but it is a lot better this is the max melee setup so this is the best possible gear that you're gonna have for raids so as you can see we've got the completionist cape we got ferocious gloves brimstone ring we got full ancestral sanguity staff twisted bow and scythe of vita so yeah this is the best possible gear that you can possibly bring so now i'm gonna explain each of the items that you need for specific rooms so it's probably easier explained using the mid-tier setup. So you need a salve amulet that's used for the skeletal mystics rooms. And as you can see, it isn't shown here, but it has a much higher percent damage and accuracy against undead monsters, which are skeletal mystics. So it's really highly recommended. It increases your damage output a lot more. All right, secondly, you will need a stab and a crush weapon. So Zamrock Caster is basically both of those. So as you can see, there's a stab and a crush. All right, next of all is the lockpick. This is used for the thieving puzzle room, and that's pretty much it. But it speeds it up a lot, so I definitely recommend bringing it. Next of all, we have a Defense draining weapon, so you'd either bring a Dragon Warhammer or a Bandor Scored Sword. Dragon Warhammer is a lot better because no matter what you hit, it still drains it by a certain amount. Whereas Bandor Scored Sword, it depends on the amount of damage you do, which determines how much defense it drains. So Dragon Warhammer is a lot better, and it's like a turn one. So instead of needing to bring a hammer in raids, which you will need to build the chest, and for the crab zoom, you can just bring a Dragon Warhammer. Whereas if you bought a Bandor Scored Sword, you will also need to bring a hammer as well. All right, so next up is a pickaxe. So this is just used for the Guardian's room, but you need to have one. You can't do any damage to the guardians without a pickaxe. The best possible pickaxe you can use is the third age pickaxe because it actually attacks quicker than a dragon pickaxe. Alright finally rune pouch so that's just used for blood barrage to heal yourself up. You can use that on the mage hand at home or you can just use it on like scavengers to heal yourself up so I'd recommend bring blood barrage runes if it's your first time. And yeah like I said earlier if you don't have a subtitle helm then bring an anti-venom. And yeah that pretty much covers everything I believe. So now that you're geared up and ready let's begin with the runes. Once you make the party just enter the chambers of Zeric. An important part is scouting a raid so you can click the world map here and as you can see you can actually use the arrow keys to see what rooms are in each one. The ones you want to avoid are vanguards and ice demon puzzle. I just skipped those rooms completely so if you see either of those rooms in there then just click I'd like to leave, go back to the recruiting board, make a party and then head straight back in. See as you can see we got a different raid so it is randomly generated. Alright so it may take a few tries but we finally got a good raid. So as you can see there's six rooms in this one. It can be anywhere between five to eight rooms. Just bear that in mind. So I'm going to be explaining each room as we go through so obviously to start the raid just click start raid and then click begin the raid and then you'll be able to start it so yeah, this is a prep room. There's always one right at the start of the raid, I believe. You'll be building a storage unit and be able to plant seeds, but I'll be explaining that later on. For now, just stick with the stuff you got in your inventory. 
So this is a scavenger's room, so you have to kill these scavengers to get supplies to prep later on for Ohm, which is the final boss. There's usually a shortcut, and now the only one worth doing is push boulder. So if you see one of these boulders, they actually give you points. Put your Tamil on and drink a super combat potion wearing your best melee gear, because that actually gives you more points, um, depending on your strength bonus. So yeah, just push the boulder, and then you should get a few points, as you can see. Right, so this is the first room, which is Vespula. So if you don't have a Twisted Bow, then you will need either a Ballista or an Armadillo Crossbow. Now, depending on the layout of the room, there's a certain grub, which is the safe spot. It depends on where the portal is, so usually the grub is on the right side of the portal. Yeah, you can't actually see the portal from this render distance, but once we enter, you can. You want to put on your range prayer, and you want to protect range. Wear your range gear, and make sure you have your sun on and drink your anti-venom, because Vespula can poison you. Now, with your Armadillo Crossbow or Ballista, you want to have it on long range. So as you can see, we're currently in a safe spot we don't really take much damage here so drink your ranging pot and then what you want to do is you sort of have to flinch it you attack the portal and then instantly click back on the luck scrub and then you won't take much damage But yeah, as you can see, that room was very easy, almost no supplies used, and it also dropped some brews. So Xerix aids are basically brews, so you just drink those. And yeah, drink the restore on the ground, and it also drops a prayer enhance, take a sip of that. So this is where your pickaxe comes in handy, so if you have a Drang pickaxe, then you use a special attack on that, but if you have a third age pickaxe, which not many of you will probably have, it actually attacks slightly quicker. You want to put Tumble on, put Berserker, drink your super combat pop, and basically you sort of have to learn this room by doing it, so you attack the Guardian and then instantly step back. Depending on which pickaxe you're using, there's a certain amount of time that you wait before attacking it again, and you sort of have to flinch it. Alright, so it does drop seeds, which will come in handy later on, but I'll be explaining those later, so just make a note of that. Alright, so this is the thieving puzzle, and this is where your lockpick comes in handy. So if you have the opportunity, I'd recommend building a storage unit, but you have to get the planks from killing scavengers as I showed earlier. And you also do need a hammer to build the chest, so unless you have a dragon warhammer, like if you have a band of source for example, you'd have to go kill scavengers to get a hammer. If you haven't built the storage unit, just drop all your potions. And basically, all you have to do is just open these chests, so this room is really simple. So you can also get hit by poison as you just saw there, but opening these chests essentially just gives you cavern grubs. As you open the chest, it says some cavern grubs of Hatched. It does scale depending on how many players are in the raid, but in a solo, I believe you need around 22 cavern grubs. And yeah, you want to make sure you deposit them all at the same time. So once you like fill up your inventory, just drop them somewhere. So I've just drop nine of those grubs over there. And something to note that if you get poisoned by a chest, then I'd go to a different spot because that chest usually always hit you for poison every time you try to open the same one. So just thieve different chests and they'll consistently give you cavern grubs. All right, so as you can see, we now have 22 cavern grubs in total. So just pick them up and then deposit them all at the same time and as you can see his health starts going down so after you deposit all of them you can actually continue thieving them and just get some extra just in case but i believe that should do the job and it also gives you extra points if you deposit more so it's definitely worth doing so yeah just deposit the rest and then pick up your potions and then the room will be done this is the upper floor completed so you can touch the energy well to actually restore your run energy which is pretty useful <laughs> just go down to the next level Alright, so this is the crabs room, so as you can see in a solo room there's four different crabs and then there's four different crystals in the room. Now for this room you will need a dragon warhammer or a regular hammer, so you need either of those weapons and you need all three combat styles, so magic, melee and range. So basically how this room works is you see that flying energy focus and it comes from the same spot every single time although the rooms can be differently laid out and you basically use the crabs to deflect that ball of energy into different directions so depending on the combat style that you attack the crab with that basically influences the color of the energy ball so the four different crystals each require a different color so the black crystal requires the white color the yellow crystal requires a blue color the blue crystal requires a red color and the purple crystal requires a green color to get the blue color you need to attack the crab with magic Magic. To get the red color, you need to attack it with melee, and to get the green color, you need to attack it with range. And for the white color, you just need to make sure that the crab is white. So as you can see, I've currently got the crab set up so the orb of light hits the purple crystal. So I now need to make the crab green so that the orb of light turns green. So as you can see, the crab is now green, and then the orb turns green, and it hits the purple crystal so it now turns white which is exactly what you want it to do so that's a really simple one but for the other crystals it's going to be a lot more difficult so to keep the crabs in place you actually have to smash them by right clicking them while either wearing the dragon warhammer or having a hammer in your inventory and that's basically how you keep them in position so as you can see from that positioning the all of light is then going to hit that crab bounce off it and then hit that red crab into the blue crystal which is exactly what you want it to do and you basically have to do that for all four of these crystals 
As long as this is a certain color, it won't change. All right, so now for the black crystal, it's a bit more difficult because you need three crabs to actually do it. So you need to make sure that none of the crabs are colored. So as you can see, none of them are colored. Eventually after hitting it, it will revert to the white color. So then as you can just see there, we managed to get the black crystal by using all three of those crabs. And yeah, that's room complete. So I know that is a bit tricky to understand, but the only way to properly get the hang of it is to actually do the room yourself. So go try it out in a solar aid and see how you do. If you don't have something that requires you to use special attacks in the next room, then I wouldn't use any of this room, but otherwise you just Dragon Wall Hammer them. We have Tech to next room, which we need to save our special attack for, so we can't use that. Now, what I'd personally do for this room is make sure you pray magic first of all, but I'd actually melee the baby mutter doll. So there's two different mutter dolls. First one is the baby one, drink a super combat. Now, both these monsters hit a lot, so make sure to keep your HP high. You do not want to die here. This room is probably the most supplies you'll use out of any room. So as you can see, once you get it to half HP, it will actually cut the meat tree. Now you have the option to ice barrage it and keep it frozen so it doesn't heal but that gives you less points so I'd actually say it's worth it to like let it eat stay high HP and make sure you don't die and yeah that one is really easy with melee now there's a certain safe spot so the layout of the room will always be the same but stand in this position right over here put your range on pray range and then basically just range it so I'd use the blowpipe if you have one of those otherwise just use an orbital crossbow so yeah, once it gets half HP again, it will go to eat from the meat tree. It'll only do that once. So after this, it can now melee you. So basically, you just want to run away and keep your HP above 70 because it can hit above 70 if it does melee you. Just be very careful. As you can see, it is now dead. And the Mutterdoll's room actually drops overloads. If you have a lot of rooms left, I recommend bring that. And it means you won't have to make overloads for prep, but I'm gonna show you guys how to anyway, just in case you don't get Mutterdoll's or Tecton. All right, so the next room is Tecton. So for this one, you wanna pray melee, put Tumul up and drink Super Combat if you don't have an overload. And you wanna spec it twice with a Dragon Wall Hammer. Make sure it's on accurate, that has the highest chance of hitting. And yeah, you wanna lure Tecton as far away from the anvil as possible. Just like walk towards him and then run away. And then you just spec him twice. Hopefully they hit, so if you have a Bandus God Sword, use that instead. Now you want to put on your crush weapon. For me, it's the Dragon Hunter Lance. Usually you'd use a Zamorak Caster. And if you have a Scythe of Vita, which I'm guessing most of you people don't, then you'd also use that. On solo, it is very easy. You should basically take no damage, just sidestep it around the corner basically. So as you can see, after each hit, just move diagonally and it shouldn't hit you. It is now dead so it drops overloads if you don't kill it in time it will run back to the altar and shoot loads of projectiles and you basically just have to run away from them to avoid them all right so the next room is the vasa nisteria room that we're about to enter so if you're doing it solo then you're guaranteed to take damage no matter what it'll hit you for like 80 percent of your health i believe i'm not sure it's around that figure but there's no other option you just have to take the damage if you're in a duo or more like one person will be teleported under it and the other person has to basically run under it to avoid the other person basically almost getting one hit yeah it's pretty much what you have to do and the best uh, thing to do against this boss is pretty much just use range so as you can see i'll get like one hit off oh yeah, i didn't even get one hit off and then it will just hit you so you want to pray range like after it hits you because as you can see there it hits an 82 and there's four different crystals and basically how this boss works is it'll travel to either one of those four crystals and you have to just hit it while it's moving along but once it gets to one of the crystals you then have to attack the glowing crystal as you can see so if you drank a brewery store up drink a super combat flask and you want to use a stab weapon on this so if you have a zamra caster then use that or a dragon hunter lance then use that but grazi rep is a better stab weapon so i'm just gonna use that and as soon as the crystal's dead you'll be able to attack it again basically all the crystal does is it heals the boss so you want to kill the crystal as quick as possible and it is possible to take like no damage you just have to dodge the crystals um before they land on you basically so, like just attack and then move it's a lot easier with like a blowpipe or honorable crossbow because the attack animation is a lot quicker but yeah try and do as much damage as possible and yeah just keep attacking the crystals so as you can see like the purple thing is it healing so yeah you do want to kill the crystals and yeah it's really that simple so if you have a crossbow ruby bolts can be very effective against this if they hit 100 or something all right and that should be the boss dead so not too challenging it's just the main bet at the start can hit you for quite a bit of damage and also drop twisted potions which they boost you to 120 range so they're actually better than a ranging class so i just drop uh, yours and pick those up all right so this is a tightrope puzzle room it is also extremely simple so there's two mages and two rangers in a solo room the idea is you have to get that keystone crystal to unlock the exit as you can see there's a shimmering barrier or whatever and pretty much all you have to do is just kill both the mages both the rangers and then cross the tightrope and get the keystone crystal and that's literally all you have to do very quick room and a lot of points I 
I forgot to mention you should probably arrange these. If you have a blowpipe, they're really good against these. And I believe the max health arranger is a 37, so yeah, keep your health high. Alright, so once everything's dead, you just cross it, pick up the keystone crystal, literally just pick it up like that, it'll go in your inventory, and then you can move on to the next room, simple as that. Alright, so the next room is the Shamans, and this is where your Serpentine Helm is going to come in handy, so do not take it off no matter what. To be honest, you can actually take no damage from these, so you pray range and then just range them with like a blowpipe, and they will jump, and whenever you see them jump, just run away, because they'll try to land on you, and if they do land on you, then they do quite a bit of damage. As you can see, it can shoot a poison blob, you have to run away from that, and it also spawns like three of these Lizardman spawns. Now, if you just run away from these, eventually, they'll just stand still and then explode. So, basically, a lot of this room is just running away, basically, so if you keep running away you can literally take zero damage from this room but obviously if you make a few mistakes you can take a bit of damage but honestly this is a really easy room you just keep ranging the shamans until they're dead i think the only thing better than a blowpipe would probably be a scythe of vita so if you're one of those people with a scythe of vita then that's probably like the best thing to use against these in a melee setup but there's only three in game at the moment so i'm guessing most of you guys watching this guide don't actually have one just keep running basically that's all you have to do this room make sure you have a serpentine helm and if you don't have one then make sure you brought an anti-venom like i said at the start otherwise you'll be taking a lot of venom damage and i don't think you can actually make an anti-venom in raid so definitely make sure you have one that's room complete Alright, so this is the Skeletal Mystic Stream, so this one is really simple, all you have to do is basically just range it, to be honest. So you want to put your range gear on, whether it's a blowpipe, or twisted bow, or whatever, and pray magic against these, and drink your ranging quad, and you want to have your salve amulet on, that's the reason you bought the salve amulet, it has a really increased accuracy and damage as well against undead monsters, which are skeletal, so yeah, you want to stand as far back, only one at a time should be able to aggro onto you. So yeah, you pretty much just kill three of the mystics, so these also drop seeds, so they're pretty useful for like prepping at the end, pretty much all you have to do this room. Alright, so that's pretty much room complete, like that mark of power will disappear. And another thing, don't stand in melee distance of the Skeletal Mystics, because they can melee you, and they do actually hit pretty high, so yeah, that's one thing you want to avoid. Don't stand close to them, and then you'll be able to enter the next room. Alright guys, so this is the Ice Demon room. It is pretty simple, and they've actually changed it to make it a lot easier, so it's no longer as bad as you think. So I'd recommend already having built the storage unit, and then there's a bronze hatchet and tin box located right over here. As you can see, there's like four braziers in total, and if you chop these saplings, you should get kindling from each of them. So you need around eight kindling per brazier, basically. So you want to get yourself 32 in total, and like once your inventory is full, just like bank all of them in the chest, and then yeah, get 32. We have around 32 slightly extra so make sure you get out eight at a time because if you have like a full inventory it will automatically like deposit all of them in at once <laughs> you want to make sure you don't do that so take out like eight at a time from the chest and then deposit them at each brazier just like i'm doing right now and as you'll see its health slowly goes down all right so that's the third one and you get the last inventory and once its health goes fully down you'll actually have to fight it so i'd recommend using range against it unless you have a scythe of vita in which case a <laughs> scythe of vita is better but most people don't have that all right so as you can see it steps out and you pray range against it and yeah he can shoot snowballs at you as well and you basically have to run away from them that's it rune complete Alright, so that's the main part of the raid completed. Now it's just for the final boss fight, which is Ohm. Now you will have to prep for this. So this is the prep room. There will always be one before Ohm. So now I'm going to show you guys how to make overloads, brews, restores, and prayer enhancers, which you will need for the boss room. So you want to run back to the nearest scavenger room. So for me, it's just before Tecton, but it can be quite far away. So yeah, you want to kill these scavengers. And also I forgot to mention earlier, so there are lots of bosses which drop seeds, such as the Guardians, Skeletal Mystics, and Shamans. So I think those three are pretty much the only ones that drop seeds but yeah you usually get uh, most of them within a raid so what you want from these is 15 juice you only need like one or two sisley and you only need like five or so mushrooms currently i'm just going for the juice and you also need two planks to actually make the chest all right yeah so we're already done so that's pretty much everything you need from these so like i said earlier to build the chest you will either need a dragon war hammer or a regular hammer so yeah if you don't have a hammer then you will have to keep killing scavengers until you have one but i'd recommend just bringing one in the raid all right so build the small storage unit that's pretty much all you need you don't really need any of the other two apart from the achievements but just deposit all your stuff in the private storage so if you're like me and you forgot to pick up seeds don't worry there's still a way to get them so you take a rake and then you have to run west towards the home room and then you'll be able to rake these weeds to get seeds 
So yeah, just do that until you get enough seeds. So you will only need... Okay, that was genuinely perfect. You only need one gold pile, one knocks. You only technically need one Bucci, but you can get two just to be safe in case you're unlucky. So the first thing you want to do is you need a seed dibber to plant that, but you can get that from here and a spade to like clear the plant when it's done. If you don't have overloads, you will need to make them. So to make overloads, you need Bucci's and Noxifers. Those are the only two hubs you need plant those real quick and while you're waiting for them to grow um, you can actually get vials and fill them with water which you will need to make the potions so you get that by using them on the geezer here you'll probably only need around 20 vials all right so to make the overload you need three water vials and one of each ingredient so to make an overload you need three gold bar plants and then one noxifer and like I said earlier you need 90 herb to make this so make sure you only bring one of each ingredient so you don't actually make more or like set that to one just to be safe you need one kodai one elder and then one twisted potion and then you finally use the Noxifer on all those three to make an overload and it's as simple as that. So then just clear the patch and plant your Bucci's and wait for these to grow. So depending on um, the gear that you bring, I'd recommend bringing as many brews as you can basically. You will only need two or three restores and one enhance as well. So just fill the rest of your inventory with brews because the overload makes it so your stats don't go down anyway. You want as many brews as possible. Yeah, so the Sicily is used to make the prayer enhance. So this is the prayer enhance and it basically keeps your prayer high throughout the entire ohm phase. Very very useful and the mushrooms are used to make the revitalizations which are the restores basically and then finally the juice is used to make Xerix age which are brews so I'd make around 10 of those or however many you need to fill up your inventory so yeah once you've made your potions put them in your storage and then get out all your gear so you'll no longer need your lockpick your salvami or your pickaxe if you have a dragon hunter lance that is extremely good for the melee hand but a grazi rapier is slightly better so only bring a dragon hunter lance if you don't have a grazi rapier basically otherwise just use your abyssal tentacle for the melee hand and yeah technically you don't need to bring your stamina flask if you run the melee hand correctly but i'm gonna bring it just in case so yeah this is my current setup so i've got one overload one enhance three restores and the rest filled with bruise so before you start the ohm take a sip of your overload restore your run energy by touching the energy well and then you want to have a spare brew in your storage just so you can eat up to full and then still have another brew for him all right so now we're good to go as soon as you enter own, pray mage because that's always its first hit. The right hand is the melee hand, so you want to spec that once on the first phase and then just attack it for a bit. So I'm going to mark tiles, which you can do in settings where you basically run the head. Alright, so there's teleport attacks, so if you have a white marker around you, then you need to run to that spot so it, you don't get hit. Alright, and now you basically have to run the head. So if you just saw what I did, I basically ran to the opposite side and they got it to turn towards me and then you, you literally just run between these two tiles and then it won't be able to hit you for the entire phase. And as you just saw there, if you miss that, there was a green crystal. You can actually see that before it appears. And if you stand on the same spot while that green crystal is there, then it will hit you for a lot of damage. And there's also these uh, lightning things. So if those come towards you, just run out of the way. Otherwise, they'll stun you and take your overhead prayers off, which is bad. And also, if you're maging and you have your primordials on like I do, just like drop a brew or something and take them off since that increases the accuracy. So as you can see there, we got another teleporter and we didn't make it in time. So we took a little bit of damage, but we were still close. So it doesn't matter too much. Learning to run the head is probably the most difficult part of doing this. Just like try and watch this video and like <laughs> copy what I did to get it to turn. And the only real way of learning it is by doing it yourself. So you do have to practice. So as you just saw there, there was another green crystal. It can be a bit difficult to spot if you have these tiles marked. So just keep attacking the mage hand until it's dead. And it has two main attacks. So either attacks with magic or range. The, the big one is mage. The little one is range. So as you can see, it can also fire spheres at you. And it can shoot bombs. So if you see a crystal bomb, as you can see there, run away from it because that deals a lot of damage if it's close to you. Alright, so the mage hand is dead, so then you just switch to your melee gear. It can fire different stuff at you, and it does say that in the chat. So if it's a sphere of accuracy and dexterity, then you pray range. And as you can see, there's a green crystal there. We just walked away from it. Alright, sphere of magical powers. You pray magic, otherwise you'll take a lot of damage from that. Alright, so yeah, we're changing our prayers depending on what style it attacks with. So usually it shoots three of the same one, and then it changes. It can be random though. Alright, so that's the first phase complete. So there's four phases in total, and the first two are pretty much exactly the same. So for the second phase, you basically just do what you did on that phase, and there's falling projectiles in between each phase as well. Just run away to avoid them. Like, if you're within two squares of them, I believe, then you will get hit by them, so just run far away. The second phase will spawn on the other side. The right hand's going to be the melee hand, like I just said. Make sure to suspect that once again. Pray magic, because that's always going to be the first attack. All right, so this is actually the flame phase. This one is one of the trickier phases, especially in masses, because it can basically burn you. All right, so... What I just did there 
is I ran away from the flame. So once you learn that, you can spot it. But if you're in the middle of those flames, you take a lot of damage. And there's a sphere of aggression. So those are the three ones that it attacks with. So as you can see, we just got burned. So if you're in a raid of more than one person and it burns you, you want to stand far away from anyone else in the raid. Just stand still and then your burn will eventually disappear. It attacks like five damage for five times. And as you can see, just got another uh, period of fire there. So just run away from those. And yeah, just go back to running the head. But those are the th main three things about the flame phase so it can burn you and if you get burned stand away from other people because you'll spread the burn and if you're on the melee hand and you're burning do not run into the melee hand otherwise you'll pretty much burn everyone in that raid and yeah the flames do a lot of damage as well so try to avoid those to the best of your abilities if you're low on health to conserve bruise i'd blood barrage the mage hand that way you don't use up your bruise especially for learning this for the first time so the mage hand is dead again so go back to the melee hand run away from the lightning things and pray melee on that all right, so we actually mistimed flame things, so now we're going to take quite a bit of damage. Oh, we got teleported at the same time, so that kind of saves us, but usually it deals around 50 damage. And yeah, also make sure you're overloaded at all times, just keep an eye on that timer. All right, we, got, we just got burned again, so it doesn't really matter too much in a solo raid, there's not too much you can do about it. All right, so that's the second phase done pretty much. So this is the third and final phase, and for this one, you want to use both your Dragon Ball Hammer specs on the melee hand. And this phase is slightly different, so once you use both your specs, basically you have to kill the mage hand and the, and the melee hand at around the same time. And the melee hand won't be protected, so you can attack both of them as much as you want. I'd recommend getting the mage hand down first, like deal as much damage as you can. And when it's doing that green thing, it actually heals, so what some people do is they actually just hit through it anyway, because you actually get more points if it heals, but if you're not experienced, then don't hit it when it's healing. If you're getting hit by acid, turn your run energy off and then just walk away in a circle and then the acid will slowly drip off, but that's the main thing about the acid phase, that's pretty much the only attack that it does. Alright, so I'm going to explain tr how to run the head. So as you can see currently, it's standing still, it's not going to turn its head unless we go to the other side. So take one step there, and then run instantly back, and then run there again, and then as you can see, we got the head turned. So yeah, just keep doing what you do, and make sure you don't kill the mage hand, like leave it on around 10%, I'd say. And make sure to Blood Barrage to get your health back up as well, but I'm using a Sang USC staff, which heals me anyway. And also guys, you can't use Soul Split in raids, I forgot to mention that, so like, if you try using it, it says, it says Soul Split doesn't seem to have any effect here. So yeah, after you teleport, you basically just have to get the head turning again, and once you learn it, it's not that difficult at all. Right, so as you can see, we got the health down to 4%, so don't kill the hand, go back to the melee hand, and try to get it down as well. If you have another special attack, then use that. And yeah, I'd say if it's your first time, just keep your health as high as possible because you want to stay alive because if you die, you will lose a lot of points, especially at home. So yeah, you want to full kill the melee hand and then go back to the mage hand and make sure you kill it very quickly. Like, ignore everything else. Just make sure that that hand dies around the same time. So as you can see, it's healing back up the melee hand. And if the mage hand doesn't die, then the hand will be fully restored. All right, now it's the last phase. So you switch to your range gear. And then you can still run the head on this phase as well. But there's falling crystals which deal quite a bit of damage. So you want to run the head but still like keep far away from the crystals. So if you see what I'm doing then like I'm running the head but I'm still dodging the crystals. And yeah, you can take off your helm as well so you have more range accuracy. So for this phase, a Dragon Hunter crossbow is basically a better version of an Arbor crossbow. And it's very useful here, it deals a lot of damage. So if you have a Dragon Hunter crossbow, definitely use that. Otherwise just use your blowpipe or Arbor crossbow if you have either of those. Just any ranged weapon basically. But yeah, Twisted Bow is obviously the best version. This is where learning to run the head comes in very handy because if you can't do this then you take a lot of damage. I guess you could attempt home for the first time by just constantly blood barraging the mage hand and just keeping your health high and avoiding all those attacks, but you do want to learn to eventually uh, run the head. Alright, so this should be Ohm about to die. Let's hopefully get a good drop. <laughs> Probably won't, but... Alright, 73 kill count. And yeah, that's raid complete pretty much, so some snapdragons, rune arrows, and not much else. So yeah, usually raids take around 35 minutes to complete. Like, I took a lot longer because I was explaining each room as I did them, so I did them like really slowly, but... That is pretty much how to do raids. Alright, so I'm actually just going to show up a fast forward run of the great game boss without like talking over it so you can see how to do it. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy.
Right, yeah, so I'd say that was a pretty flawless run, so you don't have to run the melee hand like I did on the first phase, like, you'll still have more than enough brews, but I just did it anyway to show, like, if you're running low on supplies, that is an option to run the melee hand. On the final phase, like, I hit the melee hand, like, while it was healing intentionally, because you actually get more points by doing that, so that's why I did that. And yeah, I forgot to dodge the flame bit that time. I <laughs> it is pretty difficult to spot. I'd recommend if on the flame phase, you just constantly click, with, like, away whenever you're attacking, like, either of the hands, unless you're running the head. Yeah, that's the best way to make sure you don't get hit by the flame. Alright, so last of all, the rewards from Chambers of Zeric Raid. Yeah, that's probably the main part why you guys are even wanting to do raids in the first place. The Twisted Bow, so yeah. This item is extremely valuable, but also extremely rare. As you can see from like the point system, Chambers of Zeric has its own unique drop system. So as you can see from this picture, the raids on here is really similar to old school. So as you can see, it's pretty much like the same weighting. So there's an 80% chance for every 570,000 team points. And it's scaled, so like 285,000 is a 40% chance, and 855k points gives an 8% chance of one drop, and then a 40% chance for a second drop. So there's an overall cap, three unique loots per raid. So if you're on a mass raid, there can't be more than three item drops. But yeah, for each unique, a player is chosen randomly done on a weighting system. So as you can see, if like one player had 30,000 points and another player had 60,000 points, player B would be twice as likely to get the unique drop. And then it decides what unique you're going to get after it's decided that you're going to get a red drop, which is the purple light so a random unique is chosen from the unique drop table and each item has a weighting and if you're not chosen from uniques you get some random resources and the quantity of that is based on your points so yeah these are weightings so the most common drops by far are the rigor and augury prayer scrolls that's like probably what you're gonna get as your first raid drop for slightly rarer stuff so they still haven't removed the dragon sword throwing axe or harpoon unfortunately yet so that's like the second most common thing those three troll drops then you're most likely to get the dragon hunter crossbow or the buckler and then comes in the good stuff so ancestral pieces and the din's bulwark which isn't that good they don't actually drop dragon claws on here so you don't have to worry about getting that but then comes the three rarer stuff so i think on icon of that the twisted bow has a weighting of one instead of two so so Twisted Bow is the rarest thing you can get from here, but Elder Maul and Kodai Wand both have a weighting of two, so they're like the second joint most rare stuff you can get from raids. But yeah, Twisted Bow is by far the rarest one, so that's the one you're looking to get. But yeah, each of these items is really useful in their own way, so... Oh yeah, sorry, instead of Rigor and Augury Prayer Scrolls, you actually get the Anguish and Torment Prayer Scrolls on here, which are the new curses, so Torment is the major equivalent of, of Turmoil, and Anguish is the range equivalent of Turmoil as well, so they're both really overpowered, so the scrolls actually do sell for a decent amount. Twisted Buckler is the best in slot shield for range. Dragon Hunter Crossbow is the best in slot crossbow and it's even more of a power than dragons like it has a high percent damage and higher percent accuracy on dragons as well including the giant ohm so yeah it is really useful on ohm if you don't have a twisted bow. Ancestral is the best in slot magic gear it has a high percent magic damage bonus <laughs> this guy's wearing full ancestral right here. The Din's Bulwark is really tanky it's like an overpowered version of a divine basically. Kodai Wand is the best in slot wand. Elder Maul is a buffed version of the chaotic Maul on here so it is really good in PKing and finally Twisted Bow is just an extremely overpowered ranged weapon like if you think it's OP in old school try it on here trust me it is so overpowered. Anyway boys I think that pretty much covers everything in the guide I tried to make it as thorough and as informative as possible so if you still have any any questions then feel free to leave a comment or message me on discord or just PM me in game but I really hope you did in fact enjoy the guide because it took a lot of work to put together so I hope you guys appreciate the effort and make sure to leave a like on the video because honestly it would mean a lot to me so yeah make sure you do that and let me know any feedback and i hope you guys did enjoy the video and found it useful and definitely make sure to try out raids who knows you might get a twisted bow yourself try out like of guys in case you didn't already watch through the video like raids is so similar to old school on here compared to like any other servers like by far has the best raids out there so if you haven't tried it already then definitely make sure to the link to like is in the description below it's currently the number one rsps right now 9 p.m on a wednesday and there's over 1,000 players online like genuinely it's so big right now so if you haven't enjoyed it already then make sure to and yeah, thanks for watching guys. And now I'm going to pick the giveaway results from the previous video. So good luck to everyone. All right, I was giving away five mystery boxes in my last video. So the first winner is Blage 2. All right, congrats, dude. The second winner is IPK for love. Third winner is Las Vegas. Fourth winner is Degreen RS. And the fifth and final winner is Veteran. So congrats to those five guys. To claim your prizes, just message me on Discord. The link to my Discord can be found in the description below. And it's one of the most active RSPS Discords out there. And I do loads of giveaways in there as well. So make sure to join. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys.